Hello, in this video, I will be showing you how we can make a simple circuit that will be able to provide uninterruptible power supply to any DC load. Here, we will be using two power sources that is, a primary power source and a secondary power source. In normal conditions, the primary power source will be providing power to our load, and when the primary power source turns off, the secondary power source will be acting as a backup for our load. In this way, we will be able to have continuous power supply for our load. The circuit that we are going to design here will be able to automatically switch between the primary and the secondary power supply so that our load may receive continuous power supply. This is the circuit diagram that we are going to follow to design the circuit. Here you can see that we have two power source that is the primary power source is this 12 volt adapter while the secondary power source or the backup will be this 12 volt battery. Here we will be also using a DC to DC buck boost converter so that we should receive constant 12 volt output while the battery will be drained during the secondary power source operation. Here the relay will be acting a switching device that will help us to switch between the primary and the secondary power supply. Also, for this example, I will be using this Wi Fi router as a load, but it can be replaced with any other load, for example, LED lights, LED bulb, DC motors, and so on. Let's just understand how this relay is switching between these two power sources to continuously run this load. Suppose we name this pin of the relay as A, this pin as B, this pin as C, and this pin as 1, and this pin as 2. The pin 1 and pin 2 of the relay are connected to the coil of the relay, which when activated, switches the pin C between pin B or pin A. Initially, when there is no power between point pin 1 and pin 2, the pin B will be connected to this pin C and when we apply power to pin 1 and pin 2, then the pin A will be connected to this pin C. So in short, this pin is named as switched or forced state which will be connected to pin C when we have power that is 12 volt at these two points and when there is no power so in normal or off state of the relay the pin B will be connected to pin C. So as we can see that this pin that is the pin C is connected to the positive of the load and the pin A is connected to the 12 volt adapter and pin B is connected to our backup power source. Also the ground of the two sources as well as the load and the relay are shorted together. This is very important that all the grounds must be shorted together otherwise the circuit will not operate. So now we can conclude that normally when our primary power source will be operating so this will be providing 12 volt at pin E as well as pin 1 of the coil. So the relay will be switched and pin A and pin C will be shorted together. So the primary power source will be delivered to the load. When the primary power source turns off, so this relay will be switched between point B and point C so that the backup power source will be connected to our load. So that's how the simple circuit is working. Now let's just move to the designing of the circuit that is the prototype version of this circuit on the Vero board. For designing the circuit, as you can see, we only need a very few components. The first one is this DC to DC buck boost converter, but you can replace this model with any other model that suits your circuit. A Vero board 1N4007 diode 
2 pin block connector and a 12 volt relay. Now I am going to quickly design the circuit on this very board and you will be able to see it in fast forward mode. Here we can see that this is the input of the primary power source, this is the input for the secondary power source and this is the output for our load. We need to ensure that the ground of the complete system is being shorted together and I have shorted here the ground of the secondary, the primary and the load all together as you can see here. So ensure that all the grounds are shorted. So this is the final version of the prototype and as you can see this port is for the primary input power source, this port is for the secondary or the backup power source and this port is for the output load. Here first of all let's see all these connections are made on the back side and there is no need to add any jumper wires on the top side. For a better version of this circuit, you can redesign the circuit on a PCB. So here is our DC DC bug boost converter. We have this relay, a diode. This diode has been connected in reverse biased with the coil of this uh, relay because we know that uh, we want to avoid the high spike when this uh, primary source disconnects right and uh, this additional capacitor has also been added uh, in close to the load because uh, when the primary turns off and the secondary will be able to provide the power source there will be a slight uh, gap between the disconnection of this and the connection of this uh, within this uh, relay. So the load might just turn off for that small period of time. So I have connected uh, 2200 microfarad capacitor in parallel with the load so that during that small time period the load will be driven through this capacitor and uh, after that, when the backup will be connected to our load through this relay, the capacitor will be charged again and uh, the load will be able to be driven continuously using the backup power source. Finally, we are now going to uh, test this prototype version where I will be connecting a battery at this port, a 12 volt power source at this port 
and the 12 volt load at this port. Now it's time to test this fruit type of the circuit. As you can see here that I have connected the primary power source that is the 12 volt power supply. At this point the battery which will be the backup is connected at this point and our load is connected at this point. For this example I am using this 12 volt LED light but it can be replaced with any DC load. If you are going to replace it with 5 volt, 7 volt, 9 volt load then you have to change the primary power source according to your load. Also this DC to DC buck boost converter must be tuned as per your load. Now first of all as you can see that our primary power source and our secondary power source which is the backup both are turned off that is why there is no output at our load. Now I am going to turn on the primary power source to see if this load is turned on or not. As you can see that as soon as I turned on the power source the LED has turned on and this LED is being driven through this relay. Now if I am going to turn on this power source you will be able to see that this LED will be turned off and a small switching point will be shifted at this relay. You see, as soon as I turned off this power supply, the relay switched which can be seen here at this location. Let me do it again. Watch at this location. Now I am going to turn on the backup while the primary power source is turned off. You can see that our LED has turned on and we can see that we have 0.064 ampere being drawn from this battery. I'm not sure if you can uh, see it clearly or not but I think now it is visible right so 0 0.06 ampere is being drawn from this battery by this LED if I disconnect the battery it will turn off so now I'm going to connect this and I'm going to turn on the primary power source. You see, now this LED is being driven by the primary power source and the current drawn by this battery is zero amperes. Now as soon as I'm going to turn off the primary power source, you will be able to see that current will be start to increase as the LED will be driven by this battery. Now you can see we have 0 0.063 amperes being driven by the LED and drawn from this battery. Again I am going to turn on the primary power source and the current drawn by the LED from the battery change back to zero. If I turn off the primary power source, again the battery is activated. One thing that should be noticed here is that there is a slight delay between the turning off of this primary power source and turning on of this backup, due to which we see that the LED remains turned off during that small delay. We can remove that delay if we add a higher capacitance capacitor at this location. Since I have designed this circuit for a small Wi-Fi router and it draws only a small current, that is why the delay will not impact the 
turning off and turning on of the sources but if you are going to change or add any load that draws high current then you must add a high capacitance at this point to ensure an uninterruptible power source so that's all about this circuit i hope you have enjoyed it if you have any questions related to this circuit you can ask me in the comment section thank you for watching my video Take care. Bye-bye.